Chris Van Vliet at Ronin Pro Wrestling in Pembroke Where are we Pines. At? Ronin Pro Wrestling. Say it one more time, I like it. Ronin, Ronin Pro, Pro Wrestling. Wrestling. There oh, we, we go. did we it in stereo it there. Ronin. Ronin Pro Wrestling. And I'm with Sammy Kelly. I like it. I feel like I'm in 1996. Yeah, Feels yeah. great. Or am I with Jeremiah Crane? That's whatever you want to call me. I don't care. Am Jeremiah I with Solomon Sammy? Crow? Solomon. I mean, I, what's with the bird thing? I don't get it. Crow, Crane, it just keeps following me. These birds, they're it's, everywhere. It's, do you have any say in these names? Sometimes, but for some reason, it just keeps flowing and flowing. He's like, you know what, man? You know, it'd be great for you. Let's name you after a bird. <laughs> Who was it in WWE that came up with that name? I had came up with Crow and Jeremiah in two separate names. Okay. And they just kind of put them together. It was like, oh, uh, 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 not Jeremiah. I'm sorry. Um, Solomon Crow. I get these gimmicks mixed up, man. <laughs> so many names, so little time. I don't know what to do with myself. But no, it's one of those things like I'd put the name Solomon and Crow together. And I'd pitch Solomon as one word, and sure. I'd pitch Jeremiah Crow, actually, which ended up becoming Jeremiah Crane of Lucha Underground, because Jeremiah is actually one of my older brother's names. Oh. So uh, I don't know. These, these birds things just keep following me around, man. Every time I see a raven or a crow on the outside, I feel like it's Vince <laughs> or someone just watching me with the big brother-type cameras. You never know. So There's when, conspiracies. When you went to Lucha, uh, did you say, I've got this idea for this other name, or did they give you the name? Uh, they actually gave me a different name. and What I, was the different name? It was Silas Crane. Okay. And I was like, I don't want to be, like, my friend Silas Young, like, I don't want to, like, take his name. That's been his name forever. I just didn't like Silas, like, because it just reminds me of old ECW, Cyrus the Virus. It's like, oh, yeah. They, I was like, that's just too close. And they're like, oh, what's the different first name? I was like, Jeremiah. And it just, they're like, yes. So instead of what I wanted to be in WWE, Jeremiah Crow, I just changed the last name, became Jeremiah Crane in Lucha Underground. But it all came full circle. Some guys in Lucha Underground get to keep their name. Absolutely. Why couldn't you be Sammy Callahan? Because they're under a AAA contract. Like, there's oh. a whole different contract based on AAA and this and that. And to be honest, I kind of wanted to go in and not have my name. Like, that sure. was one of the things, like... One of our original talks, like, would you want to keep your name? And I actually said no. I was like, I want to just play this because the way I look at wrestling isn't like, oh, I'm, I'm this guy, this guy, this guy. I look at it as every different company I work for is a different movie. And I can play different movie parts anywhere around the world and just be a different character. And I thought that was a cool just avenue to be something different. That's an interesting way to look at it because on the flip side, you could go, well, my fans already know me as Sammy Callahan. If I come out as someone different, they might be confused. Oh, they know this face. What are you talking about? <laughs> they might be, they're like, oh, that, that's Sammy. That's Sammy. People still, I don't even really mention it on Twitter. Jeremiah Crane's nowhere on there. People's like, oh, it's Sammy Callahan, Jeremiah Crane. Just goes, Jeremiah Crane, Solomon Crow, Sammy Callahan all go one and the other. And that's interesting because my buddy Matt Cross doesn't really reference Son of Havoc that often Absolutely. either. No. Yeah. It's one of those things like on Twitter sometimes, but if I'm booking Matt Cross, I don't want him as Son of Havoc. I of want that bearded, good looking punk rock kid from <laughs> Cleveland named M Dog 20 Matt Cross. That's what I want every day of the week. And it's funny that you go, you know, people know the face, right? But your look has changed, you know, quite a bit. Absolutely. I'm a cowboy now, bro. And who, who, dis who determines that? Uh, a lot of the look was me, actually, was draw. I'm actually a graphic designer, and uh, I was an art major in school, so, like, that's kind of my, my forte. I've designed, just, you don't even know the people I've designed gear for throughout the times. Give us one. Uh, Adam Rose, for instance. His very first Adam Rose gear was. Wow, okay. Design. That's what? just one off the top of my Were you a rosebud? I was not a rosebud, luckily. Oh. I was one of his, I was his DJ in one of the vignettes when I first got to NXT that you just got saw for maybe, like, Five seconds. Oh, a but I, Easter I was egg. A rosebud. I was his personal DJ, though. But you were a Terminator at WrestleMania I was 31. A Terminator at WrestleMania 31 for a Triple H. Absolutely, that was pretty cool because what people don't realize was that stuff that we wore was actual props from the Terminator Salvation movie. Wow. That they, we had to sign a contract when we put it on. It's like we will not steal this. If we steal this, if this comes up missing, like we are responsible for this. These were actual movie props from the movie that was like wow. passed down from the different agencies. So for now, that's your WrestleMania moment. I know it is. Well, yeah, I'm sure you're hoping to have a WrestleMania moment where you're not wearing uh, Triple H's, you know, Terminator gear. I mean, everyone wants a WrestleMania moment, but at the end of the day, it ain't just WWE. Like, there are wrestlers out there that don't work WWE making six-figure contracts. Like, people don't even want to go into what I made last year because it was more than what I made at WWE. There's those different avenues in wrestling now where WWE isn't the end-all, be-all. Sure, that's where everyone wants to be. Sure, that's where you can make big money in quick amount of times. Yeah. But people like the Young Bucks, people like Marty Scroll, all these guys, they have shirts at Hot Topic. They're selling thousands of dollars worth of shirt on pro wrestling tees without being backed by the yeah. WWE monster.
So would you say that you asking for your release from WWE was the best career move you've had? Absolutely, because I'll be the first one to say I wasn't Sammy Callahan when I went there. I changed who I was, walked on eggshells, and for a lack of better terms, I became a bitch. Like, I wasn't myself, and if I could go back and do it again, it, I feel like it'd be a whole different story. But I, I tried to change. I tried to become everything they wanted me to be instead yeah. of sticking to my guns and ride and die. Like, no, like yeah. I know it's right. This is right. But I think everything happens for a reason because now I've left and become one of the biggest stars in the world again, despite not being behind, back behind that WWE machine. You see the, the, you know, when the news comes out that Sammy Callahan asked for his release. It, do you go, it, it, it's, not, it's not just I walk, you walk in and say, I want out. There's probably weeks of conversations, Absolutely. right? And it was something that was in my mind for months and months and months and months and months. And when I finally pulled the trigger, I knew exactly when I wanted to do it because I wanted to show up right away and create a buzz. And I knew if I left this week, I could be at indie shows next weekend yeah. and create a huge buzz, which yeah. I showed up at AAW three days after my WWE release. Right. What a lot of people don't know is like, usually you have to wait 30 to 90 days, depending on your, your contract. Sure. And they'll pay you to not work anywhere else for those 30 days. And I actually was like, I took a roll of the dice for myself. So I don't want the money. Wow. I said, I don't want the money. And that was a scary call to say because it was like, oh, my God, what did I just do? I just turned down thousands of dollars to yeah. go out and try to, like, like, bet on myself. But betting on myself turned out to be the best thing I could have ever done. Couldn't WWE have said, no, we're not going to release you? They could have, but yeah. I was lucky enough that everything I did at WWE was on good terms. I was a model yeah, citizen. Yeah. Like, everything I do in my life, I don't half-ass things. And I was a model citizen at the per Performance Center. I did exactly what they wanted to do. I did extra training. I would do help with promo class. Anything that was ever asked me when I was injured, I'd go do commentary just to show my face. Like, I always did something to model citizen. I set really good relationships. That was one of those things. When I left, they're like, yo, the door's open. Like, but go out and do what you got to do. Like, so, the, so the door still is open. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to go back. Absolutely. Hopefully. You never know. Like, sure. there's always, like, something that could change. But, like, right now I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And yeah. I don't see that happening any time in my future. But I will say you never know where Sam Callahan's going to show up. And that's see what, what I pride myself on. Love it. How was Triple H to work with directly? Oh, he was great, man. Like, Triple H is one of the boys. Like, he was – people can say whatever they want about him, but – being in the power position that he was, he would stay after NXT tapings for hours, just NXT wrestlers lined up out the door just waiting to talk to him. And maybe not every time, but the majority of the time, he would stay there until he talked to every single person that wanted to talk to wow. him because we knew that was the boss and he knew that his input is what we yeah. actually needed. So what's your biggest takeaway from Triple H? What did he teach you that you're now taking to these other organizations? I don't know it's so much as something that Triple H taught me. It's more something that WWE taught me in a whole. And sure. it was just how to be an adult, like, and how to deal with situations, how to deal with social media, how to deal with the public, and how to deal with your public image without ruining, tarnishing it, or hurting a, yeah. a company, a corporate environment. And that is information that's priceless at the end of the day because going into WWE at 24 years old, I was a kid, dude. Like, yeah. I was not where I needed to be. But... I grew up real fast and like it taught me how to be an adult and how to be a, a better member of society. And that's one thing I'll always take away from WWE. And I saw in another interview, you talked about how WWE made you a superstar and indie wrestling, you're a pro wrestler. So it must be great for you to get back into pro wrestling. Absolutely. But it's like, it's all the same at the end of the day. I, I'm really getting sick of this term indie wrestling because now it's not indie wrestling. There is companies broadcasting all over the world getting thousands and millions of views. Yeah. Wrestlers are able to make a six-figure contract not working for WWE. Like, there is no indies anymore. Like, I and I really want to kill that term because we're just pro wrestlers now. Like, there's not no one at the end of the day that's going to tell me, not going to tell me I'm not a professional athlete. No, you're absolutely. And uh, this match is about to end. You're up soon. I really appreciate you taking the time oh, to chat with us you. today. Anytime. This was a great interview, so thank you. I'm an awesome interview. Awesome. Oh, now you're going to shake my hand. Oh, can I? Oh, you're going to? Only if we do it like a mega power. Okay, let's, let's do it. Away. And then we go to walk away, and then we come back. <laughs> That's Pro Wrestling 101. That was awesome. Ah, oh, it doesn't work. Thank you, man. All right, man. That was Is really that okay? Good.